Hi guys! Welcome to episode 3 of my Do and Design Challenge, where I attempt the extremely ambitious goal of drawing one character design for every single subclass in D&D 5th edition. Today, we're doing the Arcana Cleric, and I thought it turned out pretty neat, so let's get into it. I have been so excited for Cleric Week because it's one of my favorite classes in the game. Today's concept is a little different though, because this cleric is actually evil, which I never thought I would do, and it certainly wasn't the original intention. At first, I had created a concept for a life domain cleric that was inspired by my best friend, but I scrapped that idea because I'm a perfectionist and I just wanted that video to be really, really special. So instead, I put that design away for a future cleric cycle and decided to start over with another subclass. But I really wanted to do one of the older subclasses that you don't really hear people talking about anymore. I picked the Arcana Cleric because I found out during my research that there are evil gods that are associated with this domain in the D&D pantheon, and one of them is Vecna. And I thought, hey, I know that guy. He's from Stranger Things. So I picked him. I don't actually know that much about Vecna in D&D lore at all, except that he is evil. And I didn't watch Stranger Things because I'm squeamish. But the thought of creating an evil cleric of Vecna was just too much fun to pass up. Now, when I think of an evil cleric, the first thing that comes to my mind is cultist. <laughs> so when trying to figure out her design, I told myself that I just wanted this girl to look like her everyday garden variety cultist, which means black robes and a hood, right? But I also didn't want her to end up looking too similar to my last concept with the great old one warlock. So, I ended up just kind of stealing Vecna's color scheme right off of his body. <laughs> I have to say though, Vecna's colors and his design are awesome. It's very simple, there's only three colors in his entire palette, and the purple and gold combination gives him almost this classy, regal quality. He looks like a very expensive evil god, and it's only right if his cultists look equally dignified. So, finding a silhouette for her design that I was satisfied with actually took me a bit of time, especially since even after hours of searching the internet for design inspiration, I still couldn't come up with a concept that 100% matched the vibes I was trying to go for. So, it took me about a day or so to come up with a concept that I was kind of satisfied with, and then I jumped right into the painting. Now, the actual painting process was a little difficult because, frankly, I really struggle at painting with black. <laughs> I've been doing it all these years, and it always looks bad because I never learned my lesson. When you want to paint something black, I have found that it's better to start with some kind of lighter, mid-tone gray, and then progressively paint in darker shadows, while being careful to avoid moving straight down on the color wheel to avoid making your colors look too flat and gray and gross and yeah. <laughs> but no, when I do it, I always start with a color that's too dark, and it makes painting the shadows just so messy and impossible. Part of this is because the monitor I paint on has the most garbage <laughs> color calibration ever because it's old, and uh, I can't really get it to look right no matter how much I fight with it. So the colors that show up on my drawing screen look so much lighter and less saturated than they actually are. And that's a problem, because after I do a color test on another screen, then I have to go back into the painting and scramble to try to make the colors look lighter and less saturated and less contrasting. It's a nightmare. I was able to fix it a little bit this time by creating a second window for this image in Photoshop and then comparing and contrasting the colors between both screens in real time. It helped so much. I am going to make a mental note to try to keep using that technique in the future. So, another really fun part of doing these designs is trying to come up with a backstory for the character. Usually, I'll do it during the concept phase so the backstory can help me make design choices, like maybe giving the character a locket of their late parents or something. This time though, I came up with her backstory after her artwork was already done. So, this lady's name is Mary, and she's a drow elf who was born and raised in the Underdark, but she ended up having to run for her life to the surface world because she kind of sort of tried to kill her mom? <laughs> now, in case you're not familiar with the lore of the drow elves, basically these elves live in a really miserable society underground called the Underdark. The Underdark is ruled by an evil goddess named Lolth, and it's a matriarchal society that's completely focused on hedonism and the pursuit of power. However, their society is structured in such a way that in order to climb the ranks up in society, 
Everyone is kind of expected to just lie, manipulate, and backstab other people in order to get to the top. So Mary here, being born into this kind of society, found herself in a situation where, even though she had been born into a family that had some pedigree, she felt that her mother, who was the main leader and matriarch of the family, was doing a really terrible job of advancing the family's influence. And eventually, Mary just couldn't take it anymore. She's the type of girl who has an insatiable thirst for power, is very ambitious, and hates incompetence or weakness. Mary knew that she would be a better leader than her mother and was prepared to kill her to prove it. Unfortunately, or fortunately, <laughs> Mary was betrayed by her younger sister who sold her out to their mother after months of pretending to be interested in Mary's plan to become the new matriarch. And because of that, Mary had to flee the Underdark for her life. That's how she ended up in the surface world, where she was eventually taken in by a cute little church. Turns out that uh, this church was actually home to a super evil magic retina cult. So they tried to recruit Mary, and at first she wasn't really interested because she didn't trust people thanks to growing up in the Underdark, and she didn't really want to be a part of a group. But she ended up joining anyway because she realized through this cult just how powerful and dangerous arcane magic is. And power is her weakness. So in the present day, Mary is currently just your average regular trainee cultist, if you will. But her plan is to eventually work her way up the ranks and eventually take over the entire cult. And once she's a powerful spellcaster, she's going to go back and take over the Underdark. That's her story, to be continued. Going back to her design though, overall, I think that it turned out okay. It's not my favorite, though I think that the character herself turned out to be pretty cute. Like I said earlier, I tend to struggle with darker palettes and more gothic designs. I actually had a similar problem with my great old one warlock. I'll need to work on that aesthetic a little more in the future for sure. In hindsight, I think I'd probably go back and add a little more gold detailing, especially to her hat. I think it's a little bit bare compared to the rest of her dress. I also feel like there may have been a little too much gold detailing in the other areas of her design. I think I really could have simplified it a little bit more. Before we get to the reveal though, I have a question of the day for you guys. Since this character is evil, I'd like to know, have you guys ever played as or at a table with a character who was evil? How did that go? If you haven't, could you ever see yourself playing an evil aligned character? For me, I got pretty close to playing at a table with an evil character, but I actually ended up dropping the campaign. With all that being said though, please enjoy the reveal. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like to help a micro YouTuber out. Also, feel free to follow me on Instagram where I occasionally post works in progress and such in my stories. Stay creative everyone, and I'll see you again really soon. Bye bye!